afternoon. I'm Sarah Mitchell with UTSports.com, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the Peyton Manning Locker Room, an appropriate place for today's press event. In just a moment, you'll hear from Coach Jones, but I would first like you to turn your attention to the video screen behind me. As you can see, the players are really excited, and we hope that the entire Vol Nation will be excited and share in our enthusiasm as we combine the new Adidas look with the unparalleled tradition of Tennessee. Now, please welcome your head coach, Butch Jones. Thank you, Sarah. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for coming out uh, to this great day and this great event. I apologize for being a little fashionably late. Come on, you got to chuckle, fashionably late. But uh, we, we're really excited. And before we start, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that everything we do at the University of Tennessee is based off of our proud tradition. And everything is about a tradition because that's who we are. But it's also building upon that tradition. So at this point in time, I'd like to introduce the uniforms that Team 117 will be wearing and kind of explain to you some of the subtleties, Very, not very many changes, but uh, we're excited to show these to you. So wearing our orange jersey with our orange pants, quarterback Justin Worley. And some of the uh, changes, the, the, the change a little bit, if you could turn around, Justin, is we talk about being the pride of Tennessee, and it's a pride of who we are and representing this great state. So we've had the addition of the state patch on the back of our jerseys. If you could turn around. Again. And then uh, everything is orange and white, and uh, we're very proud of that academic patch as well. Next individual wearing our orange, jer our orange jersey with our orange pants, offensive lineman Zach Fulton. Again, everything uh, is the same with the orange jersey, just now adding the orange pants, uh, which both these are filled uh, with the rich tradition of Tennessee football. Third individual uh, wearing our white jersey with our orange pants, linebacker A.J. Johnson. Okay, again, it gets back to a pride of who we are when we go on the road understanding that everything we do, we represent Tennessee with the Tennessee across. And then uh, with the numbers this year, there's a checkerboard pattern. It's a pride of who we are in the numbers. If you could turn around, AJ. And then on the back, because we have Tennessee on the front, will be the, uh, the power T on the back. Okay, thank you. And then wearing our white jersey with our white pants, defensive back, Justin Coleman. Again, everything uh, stays the same with the tradition and uh, just the different in pants. And then what I think everyone's here today, uh, the new addition, wearing our new smoky gray jersey, linebacker Kurt Majit. You know, again, it gets back to a pride of who we are. We'll have balls on the front, the checkerboard pattern to the numbers, uh, the, pow the power tee 
Uh, there was worn from 1995 to 1998, and actually the 1914 team wore gray jerseys uh, when they had an undefeated season. On the back, again, a pride of who we are with the great state of Tennessee uh, on the back. If you, uh, turn, our kids are very, very excited about these with the shoes. Uh, they have the orange checkerboards uh, on the shoes as well. And then the matching gloves that uh, everyone covets. Ready for a picture? All right, take a moment to take photos, get a good look at the new uniforms. Guys, if you will exit to your left, now we'll have a little Q&A time. You know, before I answer any questions, uh, there's a number of individuals uh, that I'd like to personally thank. But, you know, at Tennessee, we have the best of the best. And like I tell our recruits, people make a place. And Barry Rice, Link Hudson, Trevor Green, Donald Page. Uh, we talk about giving your all for Tennessee, and uh, they give their all for Tennessee each and every day. And uh, very proud that they're a part of our football family, and they're the best in the business, and we're very fortunate to have them here at Tennessee. So I will answer any questions that you may have regarding the jerseys. As of right now, it'll be a one-game deal. Uh, we have not uh, decided which game it'll be, so that's still in discussions. But as of right now, the initial plan is a one-game deal, and uh, it could grow to that. But right now, it's still a pride of who we are. And, you know, you look at alternate jerseys and a smoky gray jersey, and it, it's the world that we live in. And, uh, you know, I said it is one of the top three questions that we're asked in recruiting are about our uniforms, our jersey colors. You know, it, it's, it attracts the best student athletes. And uh, to me, it's a pride of who we are. We have the best colors in the country. And now with the smoky gray jersey, I think that just adds to it. Yes. Well, it's been a process, you know, and the process started uh, – I would say late January, you know, and Adidas has been great partners with us. And so uh, the representatives from Adidas came in. And, you know, the big thing I wanted to make sure is that we don't lose our identity of who we are, you know, and it keeps the tradition that we have here. But it also it expands upon a tradition. And it's like we talked about as a football team. <clears throat> you know, traditions all have a beginning stage. And uh, with the smoky gray jersey, we're – we're hoping that our fan base, uh, our alumni, our student body welcome the smoky jersey into traditions. And we're hoping that, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, uh, that's still part of our great tradition, just like the seven-game maxims and the Vol Walk and the Vol Navy and the checkerboard end zones and so on and so forth. Well, you know, I could stand up here and I could tell you that uh, our team was very excited and all that, but I'm going to kind of put Barry and Link on the spot. And uh, they were in our team room today. And uh, if you guys don't mind, I'll just show you a video yourself. We're a family. What we talk about stays in this room. 
I don't like surprises. So to say that they were excited uh, would be the least to say. But, again, it's what we do on the field, uh, bottom line, winning football games. But uh, it does impact, and everything is about the student-athlete experience. I don't think we can ever forget about that. We're asking 17 to 22-year-old individuals to represent our tradition, to represent our great state, our institution. And uh, so they were, they were very excited. Absolutely. You know, that's that's the world that we live in. And the great thing here at Tennessee is we do have tradition. But also, you know, you look at any great company, any great organization, they're always staying ahead of the times. They're always embracing change, and change is difficult. And I think they're very subtle changes, but it it's all about recruiting as well. And uh, I will just tell you this. My phone has blown up with recruits across the country i um, very, very excited about that. <clears throat> yes, but uh, as we know, sudden change. And uh, I just think everyone was really, really excited about it. And uh, again, you know, I think that's what makes this place special. You know, when Eric Spolster came here, he left here last night blown away. He could not believe the media representation at a practice, at a two-a-day practice. And he talked about, even to our team, about the responsibility that they have with the attention and being relevant again and all those certain things with being, you know, in what I call the media capital world of college football. Gray uniforms. No, we'll use all five, you know. So, you know, obviously our orange jerseys at home and with the white pants and the, and the orange pants and then uh, the smoky gray will be for one game right now at home. And then uh, on the road, which we've always done, is the white on white or the, the white and the orange pants. Good. Well, you know, I'm obviously very, very excited about it because our players are excited about it. And uh, our prospective student athletes are very, very excited about it. But, you know, again, I want to make sure everyone understands how important our traditions are. And I think I've proven uh, how much those traditions uh, are important to us, how much we respect those, but it's also building upon those. And so I'm excited because our players are excited. I think our fan base is very, very excited. And uh, as we know, recruiting is, is everything as well. There was a number of individuals that were involved. And uh, we wanted to be uh, extremely selective. You know, we wanted to make sure that it represented our program in the proper taste, the proper fashion. Uh, it respected our tradition. And uh, so we did our due diligence. There was a lot of long hours of discussion, lengthy discussions. And I'm very excited because uh, everyone had a part in that. And I thought uh, it really came out, and Adidas did a great job. Well, you know, they did a great job in terms of presenting different color schemes, different color patterns. 
uh, you know, different ideas that we wanted on, on the jerseys and the pants. And then obviously, you know, making sure we had shoes that matched it and socks that matched it. So they did a great job in terms of being patient with us. We wanted to make sure that we did it right. Yeah, you know, we're really excited about the smoky gray. I, I'm just looking at this year. You know, we make no mistake about it. We don't want to be a program that has wholesale changes. Again, it's a tradition-rich program. There's only one Tennessee. And so you, we're not going to be a program who's all over the place with their uniforms. You know, we want to represent all of our former players, you know, all a great fan base. And so that's not going to be that case um, you know, but all I can speak is right now we're excited about these five sets for this coming year. We have picture day today, so this is game day attire. Well, I believe in everything you do at a high level. You do everything as a, as a champion. You know, everything is done first class, no matter what you do, the way you travel, the way you dress, you know, the way you take care of yourself, the way you present yourself in the community, you know, all that. So I'm a firm believer in that. You know, it's, it's first impressions. You know, just like recruiting, recruiting is selling. You have four to six seconds to make a first impression. You know, so I'm a big believer in that, and it's class. And this program is nothing but class, and I think that's indicative by these uniforms. First fashion show, I'm ready to play football, to be honest with you. Okay, switching gears to training camp. Uh, any questions anyone may have? He is progressing. And, uh, you know, right now I think the next two weeks uh, are going to be very, very important to him. And, uh, but it's a process, and it's a long season. So, you know, we have a great training staff. We are taking our time because of the injuries and coming back. But each week he starts to do more and more in practice. And moving forward next week you'll start to see him more involved in practice. They have no choice. They're playing. And, uh, you know, we met as a staff today, and we could play anywhere between 13 to 16 true freshmen. And uh, one of those positions, and we talked about it at, in our press conference at the beginning of training camp, is that that's one of those positions that true freshmen are going to have to play. And each of the freshmen are developing at their own speed and their own pace, and we've tried to really accelerate that process. But uh, when it's all said and done, uh, they're all going to have to play. Well, first of all, everything has a purpose. We don't do anything blindly. The three-man weave, that's eye-hand coordination. That's ball skills. You know, that's catching if you... Watch that three-man weave. The ball ends up at different positions. You know, when we talk about hands on a clock and catching the football, you know, it's at the 2 o'clock position. It's at the 10 o'clock position. It's at the 9 o'clock position, the 3 o'clock position. So that's all ball skill oriented. That's eye-hand coordination. You know, the black stripes, that's one of the most powerful things we do in our football program. If, if you could be in that team room setting when an upperclassman a big brother brings his little brother up and peels his stripe off, you win with team chemistry. That's one of the ingredients to winning. You know, and it's a brotherhood, and it's a family. And, uh, you know, every, every program talks about family, but do you really live it every day? You know, so we do things with a purpose. You know, the, the noises. You know, we have to learn how to win on the road. 
you know, and it's very difficult to win on the road. And there's a lot of clutter and distractions. We play in some of the greatest venues you can play in. You can't hear. So those are all things of being a mentally tough football team, which we must take great strides in to be able to handle adversity. So all those things that we do, you know, they're very well thought out, and there's a purpose, and there's always a reason behind it. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be a big day as, uh, you know, we want to start moving the football more, you know, and having extended drives and seeing what players have that mental toughness, that mental conditioning to be able to finish plays. And I think that's the big thing is right now, you know, for instance, our defense is running to the football, but now there's a finish aspect. Our offensive line coming off the football, there's a finish aspect. We have to do a better job of finishing plays the next couple days. Uh, tomorrow, we'll get back to playing some more situational football. And then Saturday, uh, we're really excited for that open practice. And I really want to encourage everyone to come out because we want to make it as much as game situation as possible in terms of uh, pressure. You know, when, when we spoke about the true freshman playing a wide receiver in the 13 or how many it is that are going to play, they need to be in that venue. This is kind of a dress rehearsal. And there will be some team settings, but there's also going to be individual periods. You know, there's going to be individuals where they're going to do a wide receiver versus DB. Their name's going to be called out on the microphone, and it's just those two. And hopefully 40, 45,000 people watch them. You know, we need to find out who our punt returners are. You know, so there's going to be some pressure type situations that we're going to put our players under. And so that Saturday night is going to be big as well. And every every practice from here on out is, is going to be critical in the, in the evolution and the development of Team 117. You know, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, I know that all four individuals are very prideful. They're extremely competitive. And uh, really, I think it's really helped improve all four because there is no substitute for competition. And uh, you know what? The thing that I've liked is they're competitive in the meetings. They're even competitive in their warm-up drills. But they help each other out, and they coach each other. And they're very high-character individuals but they're extremely competitive. And I think that's really elevated the game of all four because of that environment. Whenever I feel somebody has really asserted themselves as the starting quarterback, and that could be next week, that could be on Thursday, uh, that could be Friday prior to Austin P. You know, it's just, you know, when we have that comfort level that, hey, this is going to be the guy for game one starting the season. Yeah, we've asked a lot of Jerron Tony. You know, he's playing the nickel spot for us. Uh, now, you know, we've asked him to move back the corner as well. But also his role on special teams. You know, he's starting on every special team for us. So we've really asked a lot of him, and uh, he's really responding. And that's the other thing of moving forward, you know, with all these true freshmen playing, is the development of our special teams game. You win championships through playing championship special teams. And uh, some individuals are going to have some roles that are, are very critical roles in winning. And those roles are going to occur on special teams. So, you know, we've done an inordinate amount of special teams. You know, most of y'all are always at our practices. You know, we start every practice off now with a live kickoff versus kickoff return drill, you know, and it's one kick. And so, you know, I believe that adds up over time. But, you know, them understanding – you know, the, the expectations by which we place the premium we place on special teams. Yeah. Still uh, undergoing further examination um, with his calves. And, uh, you know, right now I would say it's fair to say he's going to be out for a, for a length of time. You know, it's not going to be a one-week, two-week, three-week thing. You know, it could be a couple months. And so we're still undergoing tests. And just quite simply, he showed up one day and his calves were swollen and, you know, some other things. So 
Uh, he's undergoing further evaluation, and our training staff has done a great job, and he's doing as much as possible. But, you know, right now I could see it being unless some something unforeseen changes in the next couple of days, it's going to be for a rather long length of time. He's going to go back to the doctor very soon and get the pins taken out of his thumb, and then he'll go into a cast. But he's he's right on schedule, you know, so it's going to – we'll know probably more the week of Austin P. Uh, Corey Vereen is ahead of schedule. And uh, that's no surprise to us with his work ethic and all that. And uh, we'll know a little bit more about him probably uh, that week of Austin P. as well. Okay, thank you for coming out. Have a great day.